of the Moonvale. Everyone's favorite magic tunnel for a spellplay build. How does it feel to use it on DLC? How powerful is it? We're going to make the best build possible in here for you to be able to use the Moon Veil on Shadow of the Eye Tree. And spoiler alert, it's actually pretty strong. And that's uh, nothing new. This weapon has always been very, very good. It has been buffed slash nerfed <laughs> a couple of times, although the weapon hasn't changed that much. We'll discuss about that. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's start with that. We're going to start with the stance damage, because in patch 108, the stance damage, it was divided. Now, you're going to get the most out of this weapon stance damage by using it point blank shotgun of the enemy, because the stance damage, it's divided in between two different attacks. The slash portion of the weapon, that the damage is also going to be divided into that, and the uh, beam damage of the Ash of War. Because the Ash of War deals this uh, tremendous unsheath kind of uh, attack that it also uh, has a beam. The beam and the damage of the weapon stagger potential has been uh, uh, divided. So what they did essentially is that they decrease the amount of stance damage you do with beam so that you cannot be spamming it from a safe distance to some extent. Uh, and then they increase the stance damage when you're using it with the slash portion of the weapon. In total, for the heavy attacks, which is what I uh, more often than not advise for you to use, it's going to deal a total of 30-ish, uh, like 30 in reality, 30 stance damage. Meaning that it requires for you to cast the Ash of War four times for you to be able to stagger the enemies, that the bosses that have uh, a resistance of stance damage by 100, which most of them do. Some of them will be able to get staggered just by three, uh, three animations because they don't really have the 100 stand resistance. But yeah, that's what's going to happen. Then the light one is going to have 27.5. Now, the damage of the weapon is going to range in between 5k damage provided as well that you properly buff your character, like we're going to be doing so with this build, that you debuff the enemy uh, and, and that you're also using it point blank shotgun on the face of the enemy. Because like I said, the weapon damage is divided in between the beam portion and also the slash portion of the weapon of the Ash of War. So we have a pretty straightforward mage build right here. We have 60 vigor, 30 mines. Ideally, this is a build that you can be using to cast uh, sorceries as well, but more often than not, the Moon Veil is going to be the main source of damage when it comes to sorceries. I like to use, for example, I like to use cold sorceries because the damage received by the enemy, it's a debuff that they receive more damage from us. So yeah, there's that, I'll talk about that in a little while. Endurance 20, we don't really need that much endurance. Dexterity 18, that's a weapon requirement right there. The strength, it should be 12, that's the weapon requirement. The 14 is a byproduct of my starting class. Intelligence 70, although ideally this is actually 80. That's because we're using a very specific crystal tier. But uh, yeah, we actually do have the maximum hard cap for intelligence. For the equipments, we have the Moon Veil in here. And uh, remember that you can use any type of school of sorcery that you want to be using. Uh, like I said, since I'm using cold sorceries, which more often than not the spells that I'm using are increased by the carry and regal scepter. And also this boosts the full moon sorcery, which is a sorcery that we use as a base, at least for this build. That's actually kind of nice. I like to be using a wakisashi on my offhand just to bypass the large AOEs that the enemies have. Now, very, very interesting. Re this right here, as it is, just by using Relenus' armor and the Grips of Solitude, that's more than enough that uh, yields you 51 poise, which is uh, the poise that we want to be using. The Ash of War also has Hyper Armor. If you combine that with the poise value that we have right here, this is actually really nice, so you can use whichever helmet or whichever, whichever clothes that you would want to be using. But also the Spellblade Armor Set, uh, it increases your magic damage by 8%, so that's something that you can use as well. For the talismans, we're using the magic scorpion charm, we're using the graven mass talisman, we're using shadow of alexander that uh, increases your magic damage as well, and radagon icon. 
All of these four right here I consider for them to be a must for this build, although like I mentioned, since you are actually not necessarily using spells that much to deal damage, but more often than not you're going to be using them to debuff the enemy and make the enemy take more damage from us. So one that uh, you could change, uh, exchange for example I would say it's the Graven Mass Talismans because, Talisman because we're not relying on spell damage that much, like we have those spells, yes they deal damage, the damage that they deal are substantial, but we're using them mainly to buff our uh, Moon Veil. So the Graven Mass can be changed in here for your regular utility talismans that you would regularly use. There's just three spells that I consider for it to be a must. The, the Rannis' Diagmund. This decreases the damage, uh, increased damage taken uh, on the enemy by 20%, so it's a 20% more uh, more buff damage. Then we have Terra Magica. Terra Magica increases your magic damage by 20% whenever you're standing on it. And then we have the Adulis' Moonblade, which is going to inflict cold. And if you combine it with, for example, the Rannis' Diagmund, mean this also has a uh, Frostbite meaning that you only need to use like one or two more Adulis' Moonblade after you have cast the Rannis' Dark Moon to frost by the enemy, which is going to make them take 20% more damage. You could also be using the Rannis' uh, Hat, the Witch Hat, although I don't have it for my PL, so there's that. The Mix of Wondrous Physique is actually pretty straightforward. We have the Intelligence, not Crystal Thea, so that we can manage to have that hard gap for Intelligence at 80 right there. And then the Magic Trouting Crack here, which is going to increase your magic damage by 20%. This is overall very, very straightforward. If you're a higher level character, then you can be changing the Intelligence, not Crystal Thea, for something different. Uh, although there's not that much of a consequence in here, your build is already pre established in here, so might as well just be using the green burst crystal tier if you don't need to use the intelligence not crystal tier and things like that but uh, yeah there's that this is the overall damage that you're going to get if you buff yourself properly if you debuff the enemies properly the damage on the moon veil is very very good one thing to mention is that the ash of war is very very safe to use the animation the attack animation it's also very very safe to use uh, however it has lots of recovery so it's difficult for you to spam it more often than not you're going to attack with it and then uh, start dodging once again so that you can prepare for the next attack on the longer recovery frame of animation for, for the enemies, you can by all means get a cheeky second one, which is going to be more often than not a 10k damage, uh, but uh, it's not going to happen often. I wouldn't advise for you to be trying to spam it, just wait for the enemy to attack, use it once, and then wait for one more attack, use it once, and that's going to be the dance, the, the vaults that you're going to have between you and the boss. Just have in mind that there are times that you are going to be able to cast two whenever you see that the boss has huge recovery after a very long attack or a very long AoE that you're usually going to be able to recognize them. Overall, it's a very, very powerful build. Uh, the Moon Veil has always been a very, very top weapon. I wouldn't say that it's on the meta because there's many more powerful weapons than this one right here, but it's very fun to use and you're basically a weavy magic samurai, so what's not to like about that? Anyways, if you like the content, like and super appreciate it. Now I'll tell you today you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You're in the gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Discord. Have a beautiful day.